Hello. I can get rid of that. I'm not drinking subs at the moment. Hello, guys. <laughs> hello. Sorry. Sorry I took so long. Sorry I took so long. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Kiros. Kiros, you are first. Hi. Hi, Kiros. Exodus, hi. Ah! Raccoon! Hello! Hello! Thank you, thank you, thank you for the tier one for seven months, Raccoon. It means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Exodus, hello, sheep. Hi, Kurumi. Hello, hello, hello. Bright team. Hello, Mills. Hi. Ranch, hello. Hello, everyone. For all of the Honkai Star Rail players, I went ahead and put all of the active codes. They are pinned up in chat. The drops have passed now. Sorry, but, uh, you know, you, you got codes if you haven't redeemed them yet. There you go. There you go. I... Oh. Okay, okay. I'll hydrate. Give me a minute. I forgot I haven't even finished my my story on Honkai. Like where I am in the game, I'm like in 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 the middle of like the 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 story. Oopsie. <laughs> Barry, have you eaten? Yes, I ate. Uh, I ate before stream. I ate before stream. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, do, do I have any, any Honkai Star Rail kind of, uh, deep researchers, leak enjoyers? Uh, do we, have we heard anything? Have we heard anything about Wofo -wo yet? Have we heard anything about Wofo? -wo? Hmm. Glasses time. <laughs> and I'll do the hydrate right now. No info regarding whoa, whoa, we'll give it two days. Okay. Since there's no active knowledge currently on whoa, whoa we're just gonna go for it. This seems new. Am I tripping? It feels like there's a lot more here. Have I been playing too much fucking withering? Has it always been this full? I'm tripping. Don't mind me. Oh, yeah, it might it might be the Pentacony stuff. You're right. Yeah. You better be giving me all of the jade. Was was there a story update with Boot Hill? I haven't I haven't played I haven't played since Boot Hill. I I, I was still I was still on uh, Robin. Okay, so we're go we're gonna go ahead and pull. Uh, I'm gonna get these out of the way. These individual ones that take forever, and I'm not gonna get anything. Wow, who would have who would have thunk? Okay, so I know I want to pull Boot Hill for you guys. I want to pull Boot Hill for you guys, but I really don't want Boot Hill. I really don't. I don't really care about them. I don't. I don't. I I kind of I kind of want Fu Shuan more. So I don't have a ten pull to pull on Fu Shuan. I know I'll probably end up getting her. Um, 
but we're we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get the the 10 pull for that um and go from there cryo hello 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 what's your pity at pretty high I didn't get adventuring or Robin, so I I'm probably like 20 pulls off, right? Seventy-two. Yeah. <laughs> you you could do singles and get a five star. You guys want to see? We'll do the ten. Okay, okay, we'll do singles. We'll do singles, guys. Get it, get around. Everyone gather. Everyone gather around. I entrust my good luck. Everyone gather around. We're doing singles. That's 73. This is 74. I know I'm gonna get her too. Like, it's like, I think it's guaranteed. I think it's guaranteed. You're on a 50 50? Oh, okay. Whatever. I don't really care. 75. 76. Please get her. <laughs> Seven. It's the last one. It's the last one I have right now. Seventy-eight. Not the hard pity. I live on hard pity. Are you forgetting that when I tried to pull Sparkle, I went 81 pulls and got Japard? Are we are we forgetting about that? Well, uh yeah no i got the ones here i'm not gonna use these but now i do have enough for a light cone i think i had enough for a light cone the last time let's check the volume levels okay Well, at least, like, Rania's, like, good. <laughs> I don't have... 
don't have Branya. I don't have Branya. Yeah, I don't have Branya. I don't even have Branya. Whoa, that was trippy. Oh yeah, we're doing story. We're we're, we're doing story. So uh, if if any of you don't want to see uh, the story, I would suggest I. Normally, I would get on... Oh, shoot, my assignments. <laughs> Let's get my assignments going. Normally, I would do my, like, little daily things first, but I'm... I really want to get the story done. Yeah, uh, if you know what the story is, no spoilers. If you haven't seen this story, this is just a fair warning that I am actively playing the story. So you, if you don't want to see it, go away. <laughs> I don't want you to go by all means, but... The Galactic Baseballer! Woo! I know I'm like so close to the end too. Oh, sorry. You should have forced me to walk so you could talk. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival. Before entering the Grand Theater. Oh. I'm dumb. On behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you. Wishing you joy under their radiance. Where are my stellar jades? <laughs> Your endeavors are worthy of extra recognition, and I've taken steps to ensure that. However, this reward is not a material one, but rather the opportunity for an open and honest communication between us. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Penacony and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. <sighs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you. Uh huh, uh huh. Penacony does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Oh, Jesus, have fun, be safe. In your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent. Common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? I don't know, why are you asking me? That's 
not the point. Don't let him mislead you. Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Tenacony's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Tenacony. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. Destroy the world! You mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use the charmity festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition? Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? <sighs> I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended the Astral Express extent, Bro. sincere apologies. Bro. The current circumstances are dire and leave no room. Bro, I was hydrating. We're doing this. Oh my God. Dreamscapes. Ranch. So. If you could, please alleviate our concerns. Hold on, well, well, hold on. Fuck. Ranch. Thank you for the 500 biddies. Not thank you for scaring me to death. Just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song. As per the arrangement. Oh. Thank you for the high tree. Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can Thank you for that, Pat. as the most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. Aha. Uh -huh. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Sunday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? 
Fairy, do you like head pads IRL or is this just in character? I love head pads. I will do as you command. Robin, could I trust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth, and to proclaim my innocence so that all slander may be utterly dispelled? I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. O oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Yeah, no, I I love like scalp Question. massages. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshiping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself, always heeding their admonishments? Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? This is kind of not really related. I like how it says your god. Now, I'm 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 not going to get into the whole like religious mumbo jumbo. But it's not like god, like one specific thing. Like I like how it's like I guess like inclusive to all like religious god like figures. Never. Then a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced. Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king. Yeah, that's what I mean. And unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Like, not, not in like real world like religion. More so like Honkai Star Rail religion, where all these different eons or whatever they're called. Uh, <laughs> I suck with these words. I don't remember them, man. Uh, they're they're like religious godlike beings, you know, and they're worshipped and followed upon. And so I like how it's like your god. How it says your god as if the dream master actually follows a different a different god yeah, yeah, just say. such a delicate and complex symphony which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one Shibe. perfectly harmonize it therein 
lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Unknown! Hello, hello, hello! I am doing good. I... I'll be honest, I did not get much sleep. So when it comes to ASMR later, I might end a bit early just because I EP. <laughs> oh, not the hiccups. <laughs> Ranch, I'm five foot. Get it right. When aren't you EP? Listen. I'm, I, I got like, what, four hours of sleep? Give me a break. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang. Being overly astute can be a detriment, especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Sorry, Robin. It's just you... I did not wish for you to know this. <sighs> it's a pity that things have turned out this way. I knew you were the bad guy. This is the true reason I can't sing. The shadow that envelops Panacone is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise? could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Panacone. I worked two shifts and have not had an ounce of sleep in the last 24 hours. Ranch, go to bed. Listen, Ranch, if it helps, in a few hours I'll be doing my ASMR. You can come get some nice good sleep, okay? What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions... Because it's ASMR, Ranch. Astral Express. Should you sleep. ...stand against the nameless. It would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. Stop beating around the bush and get to the point. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. However, I won't hold it against you. On the contrary, I'm here to make my intentions clear. If it is the order that drove you to imprison Welton Robin, 
and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I possess the power to put an end to this farce. I never liked you, Sunday. Decided to resurrect a dead eon? No one's ever done such a thing. Skeletor, hello. Nico is interested. Let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's Paths Riders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps. Skeletor, that's a good thing. <laughs> Poof. Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Not some slay. Who in their right mind would expose their inner self like this? To welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray haired guest has experienced it before. Hi. So she should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. There's two. Which which one? From this point oh, on, both. Okay. I will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. That's good, Skeletor. I mean, waking up at 3 p.m. is not... This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster. And the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Panacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived a time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard. Thank you for the lurky. We saw a fledgling charmony dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers. And it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath. Having fallen into a shrub. Probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold. With fierce winds at night in the yard. Not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. 
So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. Oh, do I actually have to answer? I don't believe the bird the dove should live in a cage but from what I know it's been injured and if you just build a nest and put it in the spot that won't help I too would get a cage I mean, I, I mean okay in this day and age I would take it to like a vet place that like takes care of birds. <laughs> I know, I know not all vet locations do birds, so I would take it to one that does and I'd get it the proper care it needs and they would help like rehabilitate the bird because I, I used to have birds. I, I don't know. I don't really... I only want a pet bird, but I would want to care. I would I would want to care for it and help it get better. I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. I watched it for a long while by the window, probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground only to keep trying finally on the hundred and thirty seventh attempt it succeeded but its attempt did not go perfectly after flying unsteadily for a while it fell to the ground unable to grasp the direction of the air currents the fall shattered its wings it writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes, they all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. That didn't send it to its death at all. Next. Let us head to the second decision. In fact, I feel like if you left it there, it, it would have died sooner, which some might see that as the better option. Oh, holy redeems. Okay, I hydrate. A position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations. And now I stretch. 
and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy, sorrow, arrogance, regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser and an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them. And that, at least, they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels, until his inevitable judgment arrives? But it's not like he's gonna die. I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. I I think when having a thing like this, a place, a dreamscape and having these laws already set, I feel like you should not go against the laws that are already there. Sometimes, yes, laws should be broken. But in all honesty, like, yeah, you might have felt bad for the guy. But the reality of it is, is having something like this is a privilege that, that you get from money. That That's the thing with the dreamscape. You have to have all this money. And he sold everything to get to the dreamscape. He sold his kids. And yes, his idea for selling his kids was like the right thing to do. They were starving. At least they would be able to eat as slaves and stuff, you know, like whatever. I feel like he was so driven by like greed. I wouldn't feel bad. whether a different choice could have led to a better outcome. Sadly, his fate would only be more tragic. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Living in the dreamscape would be a mere pipe dream. Should he be apprehended, could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive no. 
they couldn't bear the resulting consequences, and thus wouldn't dare extend a helping hand. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision. Okay. The story this time is my own. Heard. Heard. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master. And as per his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the harmony and to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Is that. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. Heard? By the eon above, the bullet struck her yeah. directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony. It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Those damn savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Yeah, damn. Is that actually like fucked up her voice? I don't understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? I didn't even notice neck ornaments. This happened. Miss Robin. It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise. I prepared one last question, one last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences. Did the other two because this is merely have a consequences? A nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did. Would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? I would still support her. She can do as she pleases, girl boss slay. <laughs> I see. Now aware of 
everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Panacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain. Because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. Hell yeah. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Eating food. Good question. Fucking bitches. Consciousness is fundamentally an illusion, a cage known as self worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness. Thank you, thank you. Order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. Bro, I'm During trying to have a long weekend. Days, People are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility. Oh, shoot, ads. Ads. Guys, I'm going to quickly BRB. I'm going to go, I'm going to go stretch. I'm going to go stretch and get some water. Get some more wawa. I'll be right back. Mwah, mwah. I'll be right back, I swear. Here, have some have some lo-fi. I'll be right back, okay?
is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two I accidentally days clicked on the screen too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, thank you for the follow. You are not a baby bat. Welcome on in. Uh, just a little reminder, guys. To anyone new coming in, hi, hello. I'm Barry. You should definitely follow me. I stream every single day. I do a lot of the gotchas. I do, I do shooters. I'm variety. I'm very variety. Uh, I, I am doing the story, though. So if you do not want to see... The, the most recent uh, story update, what, 2.2, whatever, I don't know, uh, that probably shouldn't watch right now. Just, just a little warning again. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Enjoys watching people do the story to see more fireflies. See, that's fair. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I just, I just want to warn people in case they, they don't want spoilers. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. It sounds like a flawless theory. <sighs> but what is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Nate, hello, 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 Metanauts. <laughs> See, that's also valid. Some people want to watch this story and that's good. Yeah, no, the, the, the game's very good, Lucas. Um, I... You know, I, I I was hooked. I was playing Honkai like pretty much every day for a good minute there. <laughs> uh, but Withering Waves came out, and I've I've been I've been addicted. I've been addicted. Awakening, which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. 
But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. Sunday, listen, I'm fucking with what you're saying, because honestly, if I could just sleep forever, that would be like pretty fucking cool. Uh, but I don't think that's the proper way to live. Properly? Who's your favorite character in Star Rail so far? Oh boy, you know, I'm I'm an absolute Kafka lover, okay? Mm. I love I love me some Kafka. Um I fuck with Acheron, you know, we <laughs> We love Raiden Shogun. Uh <laughs> Everyone, everyone is obsessed with Firefly. I, you know, that th th there's two sides. Th th there's two sides to this. Okay, there's the people that really like the characters like March and Firefly, and then there's me who likes Sparkle and Kafka and like like the fucked up girls. So yeah, they're crazy. I want them. I, I I really wanted Sparkle. I'm really upset I didn't get Sparkle. I didn't even want Sparkle as in like the character to have on my team. I just fucked with Sparkle as like a character. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. And from there, show compassion and protection. I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. Lucas, I did 81 pulls on Sparkle and lost to Jepard, and I'm so upset. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? Hum. <laughs> Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. Damn, Lucas. Well, I ain't got money like that. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before, tell him our choice. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that Dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Penacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles, but if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. 
Okay, Misha. I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. This place looks a bit familiar. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as dormancy. Considering its connection the to meme. the leaf, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. I don't know how you guys can spend so much money on a gacha game. Like, it's not, like, hateful. Like, do whatever you want to do. I just don't get it. I, 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 I really just think it's, like, different mindset. Because I'm broke. <laughs> like, I, I've never just had, like, money to, like, throw. So, like, maybe... Like, that's it. Like, I've never just had that, like... Deity, I swear to God, you spend like $500 bi-weekly on gacha games. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. I guess maybe this way? I'm not entirely sure, but let's give it a try. Okay, Misha. Wait, you managed to... Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just... I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly... There should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by... 200 a week on gotchas, deity? And, and the room on the other side was... The toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I go up in Dreamflux Reef? So... What is this place? Damn, Nate! Damn! <gasps> that's... That's... Listen! <laughs> Leave Deity alone! I just see, I don't get that because I live off of like $200. Like $200 feeds me for like a month. Like, I, like how do you, like, I just don't, I don't get it. This could be a case of amnesia. Don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah, then let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Yeah, we'll go over here. know him as the watchmaker unless scripted to do so to? do you know anything about it misha i'm sorry i don't know much about the watchmaker but mikhail listen here 
That is exactly why the go fuck yourself redeem is a thing. Because I know some of you. I know some of you like that, you little, little, little freaks. Not me. Okay, Didi. Aren't you the one where uh, during during community games where I was like, we only believe in consensual sucking around here. And then you were like, what are we sucking? And I very dumbly said you guys and y'all, all of you were like, pause. What do you mean by that? <laughs> and then there was like four games of pure throwing because every single person there was flustered, but you specifically, Deity. Anything <laughs> special about that name? Mikhail? Grandpa's name. You too, Nate. Do you mean you're the watchmaker's grandson? Whoa. We haven't heard anything about the watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, He'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. <sighs> I want to become a great adventurer just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So perhaps it's just a coincidence? So where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. Coffee, thank you for the stretch redeem. I'll do that right now. Since I last saw him. Yeah, he dead. Where has Clonky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Thank you for the stretch. If I'm not mistaken, we sh oh, I'm a liar. <laughs> I was like, we should be getting at soon. I lied. We we are not. So you need to take you need to keep yourself safe too. Is that Clocky talking to Bisha? I promise you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you need to keep yourself safe too. Okay, Mikhail. I promise you. I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami bird are friends? Yeah. A member of the compass crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one origami bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. I hate those fucking birds. There's too many of them. 
Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? The compass is a ship bound for the new world. Clocky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panapony cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. Uh-huh. I think... I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. This is an origami bird I made for you. It will protect you from harm. Just like they did with Clocky. I love this. Like, when this stuff happens... Oh, it makes... Ugh. It, it, it itches an itch in my brain. Precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, Whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Huh. You know, I quite understand such sentiments. Don't oh, sire, you'll start getting gray hair. Hey, don't tease. I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah. Well, Keys by March. We would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah. Based on Misha's recollections, the scenes mm -hmm. in the bubble appear to be his childhood memories. Why do we flick me? I mean, thank you for the head pats, but like... To Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life. With no connection to Penacony at all. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll I'll remember more things if we go further. So I'm being watched? What do you mean you're being watched? No, we should turn left here. Uh-huh. Something feels different about this place. This is it. Up ahead is... Grandpa's study. It 
was in that room. The atmosphere in this room feels totally different. It says I'm watching you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Well, Damn, a flick truly is nothing. He placed a log book on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He describes our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived. To ensure that everyone had land to settle on, he had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study. I do love my head pats. He was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always She deserved better who? Me? Always. A train? Could it be? It's it's the Astral Express. I I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. A star. Then he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure, appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, Oh, Tingen, yeah. I miss her. Fading Eternity, hello, yes, Misha. It was as if I heard distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room exactly misha and then we followed that whistle didn't we yeah i think i can still find the way we took back then this is the dream jigsaw right so we're supposed to find the exit but where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Hey, the shard. Yo. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. Yo. I forgot how to flip them for a second. This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, 
I learned how to repair clockwork in years. Out of my fondness of precision mechanics. I'm sadly Ozzy. That's okay, Lucas. Other than like barking on adventures with my companions. The fucking creatures you have. In search of the new world. I I was born and raised here. So this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home. It's okay, I'm from Detroit. It's alright, guys. It can't get worse than Seattle. Are we forgetting about Florida? Are we forgetting about Florida and Florida, man? Like, uh, uh, us in the, the NAUS. Are, are we just forgetting about that? Like, like how these people be out here walking alligators on leashes as if it's a fucking dog? Like, are we... Florida ain't even in the top 10 of crimes committed, let's be honest. Nate, all I'm saying is every single one of those, like, cop videos I see of people getting, like, pulled over and, like, arrested, it's all in, like, Florida or, like, South Carolina. And it's always, like, drugs. It's always, like, yeah, I found, like, a ton of, like, crack. <laughs> In your back seat, you're gonna be arrested. Florida men just, like, drugs and getting naked. Facts. Not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait. Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? That's true. on australia could tie the florida stories yeah i i would say i would say australia is just like florida but not na yeah you're the only one still in the dark march when she mentioned the clocky that only she could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. The one thing that I can say is for some reason, y'all's internet be, like, expensive as hell and, like, awful. I don't know what it is. I've had many, like, Australian friends and every single one of them has, like, the worst internet in the entire world. I don't know what you guys got going on with, like, internet satellite thingamabobbies, but, like, y'all's internet sucks and for some reason pc parts and like electronics like that are expensive as hell like i'm sitting there talking to an australian guy and like fucking 1060 is like 1k not really but it was really expensive for like dirt parts over here like like a 1060 like you could find in like a dumpster <laughs> I just, I feel so bad for you guys. I really do. You're, you're just, you're, it's like Florida, but kind of worse. And when we were in Dream 
Fox Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with- You got fucking like cryptid creatures that are just like your normal day-to-day -day thing for you guys. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh... Wait... Uh, no way! From all the fairy tale creatures? I've talked to a lot of people in Australia. And like they... They will just sit there and, and talk about like, oh yeah, one time I went to use the bathroom and like a spider the size of my fucking hand crawled out of my toilet or like a snake. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> okay, what, what, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> like... Like why? Like what what is what is going on? Get get the snakes out of the toilet. That's the answer, March 7th. It's as real as Panacone. That's where I was born. And I I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory's own meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged. I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now, should we call you Misha or... The Watchmaker. Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka in the Presmere system, adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? I called that the big at the start of this! Legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. A friend of Clocky, a young apprentice, and a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the trailblaze. At the, the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I left this little life. flame, which I, I so, so cherished, cherished in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, dreams, hoping to pass it on, on to the, the nameless of, of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left, left the dream bubble, bubble and forgot, forgot all about, about his task. I, I apologize, apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. 
he remembered it. And that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Aww. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. We can stop with the double voice thing. Okay. She accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never, never end. Now, it's time, time for you to make your choice. choice. Once, Once you've made, made up your mind, mind open that, that door and, and enter the long dream of an old man. man. I'll be okay. waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. Okay. All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. I object. Is that gonna ruin anything? I wanna do that just because. Oh, come on, stop joking at a moment like this. We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, the vote stands at two to one. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. Panacone? More like pin and choke me. That's good, Madanaz. That's a good one. Good job, round of applause. <sighs> Mikhail, where are you going? Someone has to step up and save Mushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. 
Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go, board that train, and start your journey. Where are you going, Mikhail? I, I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. I can fix watches like I can fix Sparkle. I can't fix Sparkle, nor do I want to. I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tierna. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana Whoa, Dabby do. Still have a long way to go. Thank you for the follow. You are not a baby bat. Welcome on in. Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the express, our path of trailblaze will continue. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay. Nah, Sparkle forever. could ruin me. Leave in peace. Do not but care. And uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. But why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Fanagoni. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacony if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacony if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. Damn. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Want to hear it? Oh, come on. Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Penacony. This is supposed to be Gallagher? <laughs> the secret of the Stellaron... 
go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacony, so I'll have to consider alternatives Ow. beyond this, Donna. Sion Rafa, thank you for the follow. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome on in. You are now a baby bat. Send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So, a desperate struggle against the family. Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging. But what Damn. hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember. Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. <laughs> Take me to dream. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes. Leave Clocky but alone. I didn't mention once. There's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid. And there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dream. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a, a compass. compass. <gasps> Oh my god! Your name should have been Compassy. Compassy? And the watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Reef. So, Compassy. You know, Clocky, I don't think. I'll be going anywhere else. <laughs> now you force me to walk. <laughs> no, I'll stay here. And then this is where it ends. This is where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah. 69, 420, y'all are crazy. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. 
Our next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you. Uh, guys, ads are about to start. I am going to take a quick little stretch break when that happens, but... Uh... Yeah, I won't be gone long. Misha? You're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. Me turning ads. Okay, guys, I'm going to quickly BRB to stretch and kind of move around. Uh, and I will be right back, okay? Ah! Boo. Boo. I'm back. <laughs> I tried to be as quick as possible. I also didn't realize what time it was, and now I feel bad. So, do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad. 
All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. Clocky's hands spin around non-stop. Yo, we get a fucking... I'd see like a... And weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just like your hands. Always pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing it means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Paniconium Nikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Bro. to glance at Penaconi at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an eon? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen eons, who will hold the future of Penaconi. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penaconi and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penaconi Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron, Penaconi... Where did my hat go? ...cosmos <gasps> at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Give me back my hat! Wait, yo! I didn't know this! What? We get another one? Mike is doing its best. <laughs> it's the limiter. Ready for another? That's all you got? The mood is set just right. Oh yeah, Stella. You yeah. 
Oh yeah. Holy shit. She she's giving adventuring. She's giving knockoff adventuring. Oh my god. I love it. Holy shit. That's crazy. I did not know we were going to be getting a Harmony Trailblazer. That is insane. Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, In all fairness, could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Kimbe is deeply committed ah. to his own philosophy. And I eat short peoples. Order is right. I, I gotta run. Conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. I gotta run. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. We won't back down either. What? Nate, you're not supposed to be in on it. Child! Blazing a bright future for Penacony and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. The desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacony's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another- Get Nate! Get Nate! Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Oh, Firefly, don't three frown times? like that. This can't be serious. I'm five foot. I'm like first. Which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true. But in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacony. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. 
where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm. sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame, my feet is death. May, May we, we meet, meet again. again. Today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. Or salvation. Why am I getting this cutscene again? You mean my three deaths? Silver Wolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. While I want to live, I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's. That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why... We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Yeah. Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human. Though it's Definition escapes me. Isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it bear the name Firefly and all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? Yeah. I can sense Kinda. That this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah. Not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn. Won't listen or give up. No matter what. 
Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitor. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Damn, Gallagher. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. Oh my god, Gallagher, are you tomorrow? Gallagher, what are you gonna do? It's warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries. Desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <clears throat> Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote. More Akron lore. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Akron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Bro, what does that mean? Well... Dead? She died? Condolences. I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely won me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint, warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. 
A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. Who is this man? But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Never, bestie, never. Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Four system hours until Charmony Festival. Yo, we are st- of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung. It's one of the paradise kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony. A sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu major and minor systems. Half an amber arrow. <laughs> the family held an Nintendo, no, but hello, welcome on in. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other Paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Biari Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war Thank you, Nintendo. Thank you, thank cosmos. you. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazeron, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe. And it eventually evolved... Why are we flicking me, huh? ...battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation, and the Order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain Eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum. Devoured Anna Ow. The order from okay, I'll hydrate, I'll hydrate. Holy Forgaroni. Forgaroni. So saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes. But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Penacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, 
trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Why? You're being mean. Why? This is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath. Exactly. The assistance from the lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Dun hung, I was just blessed by like harmony the eon itself. Okay. More cutscenes. I'll never Are be you free. The only one here, my child. The nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand... There's four more hours of this fairy. Bro, I'm stuck here forever. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in karma? Yeah. If karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since the mechanic can fall out three and do Vegas. I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we will make the same mistake as the harmony did. I don't like this bird. 
So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too. Damn. Oh, it lied. It lied. It lied, right? That's what that means. Ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior. Is is that am I am I interpreting that correctly? It it lied? The 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 dream master lied and and then it like died. still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start. And not only that, the entire theater is eerily quiet. Bro, I have no clue. They just dropped dead. No one around. Are we too late? Even if we're late, a grand theater like this shouldn't be completely empty. Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone. Yo! Yo, achievements. We gotta get that jade. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. I have not been away that long, game. I didn't want to complete a survey. Stop. Free me. Oh yeah, I haven't done that either. Goodness. Uh, let's see. I know. Stop. Stop. I the wrong tab. Wrong. Wrong. Where? There we go. Wrong tab. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do three pulls. We're at what seventy eight. 78, yeah. I think we're at 78. So this is 79. Yeah, I... It's not guaranteed. Uh, it's a 50-50. But I, I don't really care about Boot Hill at all. I'll be honest. I fuck with, like, the color palette. But I don't really... This is 80. This is literally number 80. This is literally number 80. Yeah, it's Fushuan. 
W. I've only lost a 50-50 like once, guys. <laughs> There she is. There she is. With favor and gain, life's free from strain. My curse, my curse is that um they just <sighs> take forever. They take forever. I I will pull and pull and pull, and it's I I have like the hardest pity ever. Why do I keep going there? Go to warp, dummy. I got Gallagher. I don't know why. I, I really wasn't expecting to have a Gallagher on that warp. That was bizarre. Careful! Don't get too lost in those sweet dreams. Yi. Um, I don't really plan to throw Fu Xuan into like a team thing yet. If a lot of you are new here, Adventure Time fan, hello. Uh, I I kind of abandoned all of my characters the entire game, and as soon as I got to like Penicone, I started to need to really upgrade my characters and focus on what they have and getting them the best things. So I got my my Kafka team here because mommy Kafka. No, I'm never getting. No, I love my Nat. Why would I do that? I love her. But Nat, my mom, look at the. But yeah, I, I neglected all of my characters, so now I'm in the process of like maxing them all out and getting them like proper relic sets and and stuff like that. And I'm working on my Acheron. And she she only needs like a few few more levels here and she's like done and good. Uh I even got her light cone. I even got her light cone. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool right there. Uh I plan to get the cone up as well. Uh, but it, it can stay like what 70 for now. Uh, we got I, I still, I still can't believe this. I that I'm, I'm, I'm shook. I'm shook. That was not expected. I was not expecting that. But I have, I have a few, like, I, I have Jing Liu, I'm working on building up, there's the well, Clara, I got, like, what, E2 Japard, uh, Fu Xuan, obviously Dr. Ratio, and then, and then just, like, four stars. I'm working on it. I'm getting my shit together, though. But, guys, we're gonna move over here. We are going to move over here. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna close down the game. Guys, if you are here and you haven't used those codes yet, now is a great time to do so. It is that time. I, it was the, it was that time 30 minutes ago. I know it's my fault. I know it's my fault for stream being late, but oh well. Adventure Time fan, thank you, thank you, thank you for the follow. You are not a baby bat. Ooh. I 
I have ASMR tonight. Uh, if anyone is here and you enjoy the ASMRs, come back later when that's going on. Can you put the codes back in chat? They are in chat. They're pinned in the chat. Maybe it brokeed. Maybe it brokeed. I will. I will post them in chat. Here he goes. There you go, there you go, there's the codes, there's the codes, guys, wait, ASMR, that explains. Yeah, I, I do ASMR every night, so every morning, uh, from, at least in my time, from 3 to 7, normally, so for 4 hours, I will play games, and then from 8 to 12, I will do ASMR. Sometimes it gets a little wonky, so, like, now, it's 7.32, I was technically supposed to end stream 32 minutes ago. But I was kind of stuck in cutscenes. Nintendo, thank you, thank you, thank you for the follow. But yeah, <laughs> I I started late. I started late. I was I was buying some upgrades, eating food. I went to the store. Uh, I did some things. So oopsie daisies. I started a bit late today. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not like I'm like two hours behind. No. Uh, definitely not. Never. Uh, but let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who is honking the rail? <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see. Ah. Uh, everyone's kind of playing the withering, so I, I I'm still gonna send you guys over to uh Honkai, don't worry, don't worry. I just had to, I just had to find somebody. I just had to find somebody who is, who is playing the Honkai of the Star Rail, okay? But guys, listen here. Guys, guys, listen. If you haven't followed me yet, now is the perfect time to do so. I stream literally every single day. I, I play games in the day. I do ASMR at night. I take like one, maybe two days off a week. I promise it's worth it. You should follow. It's free. You should also check out my Discord server through that link there. You can get notified for when I go live, when I post on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as well as our weekly community events, which I also have to post about. I forgot to Monday, I think. I think I forgot to post it. I think. Yeah. Oopsie! <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna get those messages posted in the Discord server, but also check out all of my socials through that link there that has my Patreon, Twitter, Discord, TikTok, YouTube. It's all deity. It's not like they don't happen every Thursday at the same time or anything. No, no, that's <laughs> check out my socials. Okay, it has all of my stuff, everything that is officially mine. It is there. It helps me out. I boom yeah socials <laughs> if you would like to support me in any way shape or form you being here chatting following lurking is great i appreciate it oh so super duper very much i really really do you can also sub or use your free amazon prime sub on low all me you get ad free viewing tons of super duper cute emotes to use across all of twitch and special roles in the discord server as well what time three three It's also on Twitch. It's in the Twitch schedule tab. 
which also guys if you would like to see my schedule i post it in the discord on twitter on instagram and even for uh on on twitch itself like if you look if you look on the twitch like schedule tab you can see all of my my stream times there teehee <laughs> If you would like to support me further, guys, you can donate to me through that link there. All that money goes directly towards me. It helps me fund things like uh, uh, the new model and microphone upgrades and all kinds of stuff like that. Or you can check out my wish list and more directly choose where you would like that to go. Whether that be to the new model or the microphone or this or that or a game for me to play on stream. It helps me out a ton. <laughs> It helps me on a ton, but it is never at all required. Okay, guys. Um, if you would like to add me on the Honkai of the Star Rail, uh, I got off, but there is my UID. I will add you the next time I get on. Uh, so there you go. There you go. <laughs> but yes, I love you all. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I know it was short. I know it was short. That's my fault. Uh, I could have just canceled the whole stream, but I, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this. I will definitely be coming back with, with more Honkai. I want to see how this ends. I was not expecting the uh, the Harmony Trailblazer. I really wasn't. That was that was that was really cool. <laughs> uh, but yes, guys, here is the raid message for you all to copy and paste. There you go. Give you me uh, tons of love for me. And if you are going to make it to ASMR, I will see you all in about an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Love you all. Have a good night, okay?